Hello guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easier to understand. We're looking at a refrigerator. It might not look like the one in your house, but it's the same idea, just a quick sketch of one. Okay, that's what R stands for, refrigerator. And as you know, the refrigerator, the point of it is to take heat away from an environment that is already cold. So we know that that does not happen spontaneously. We always know that heat wants to go from hot to cold, from where it's hot to where it's cold, so it wants to go this way here. But if we want to make it go on the opposite direction, then we need to supply some energy to it, right? So we need to supply some energy to a machine that will do the uh, pumping of the heat to the opposite direction that it would want to go. So this is the case of a refrigerator heat pump of any of those ex heat exchange machines, right? So on this case here, we have the refrigerant. You can see it's taking away 15,000 kilojoules per hour of a cold environment and it's outputting 22,000 kilojoules per hour to a hot environment okay don't forget that first law of thermodynamics still applies so if we were to do a control volume here within our refrigerant then the sum of all the energy that's going in has to be in, in, in has to be equal to all the energy going out right so in other words we can say before we even look up the problem statement that delta e equals zero and therefore what's going in is the 15 thousand kilojoules per hour plus the work also in kilojoules per hour minus the 22,000 kilojoules per hour has to be equal to zero. So we can find out what is the work being inputted into this refrigerator. But problem statement reads, a food refrigerator is to provide 15,000 kilojoules per hour of cooling effect while rejecting 22,000 kilojoules per hour of heat. Calculate the coefficient of performance TOP stands for coefficient of performance of this refrigerator. Okay, so just like before, remember that we talked about when we have a heat engine, we talked about the efficiency, right? The coefficient of performance is the same thing as the efficiency, but we change the name just because in the case of a refrigerant, somewhat same thing as a coefficient of performance, because in the case of the refrigerant, we can have efficiencies above 100%. Okay, and because of that, having the same name efficiency could confuse some people. So they change it to coefficient of performance when we're talking about these. Um, systems, these machines, that whose purpose is to send heat on the opposite direction, which is the natural direction. Okay, so coefficient of performance, because it's the same idea as efficiency, it's also the same definition, right? So what we want, so the usefulness, or what we get out of it, what useful, divided by what we pay for. Okay, so another way to think of this is also the what we get out of it, divided by what we need to put into it. Okay, so what do we want out of one refrigerator? Well, we want to make the cool environment even cooler, right? So what we want is to maximize this guy as much as possible. This is what we're looking for, right? What do we need to pay? Well, we need to pay with the energy that we need to give to the refrigerator, right? So it's usually a compressor. It's energy, electric, electric energy in the form of a compressor that will compress the fluid, the refrigerant inside the refrigerator. Um, and then there's an the output here, which really we're not that, that much interested in it, right? So when we're talking about the coefficient of performance, what we're really talking about is, okay, how much can I get out of this by minimizing the amount that I need to put in for work, okay? So and mathematically speaking is how much QL, Q low, heat low, can I get in respect to how much work I have to put in, okay? Another way to write this, depending on how you learn this, is how much Q is being outputted from my source versus how much work is being put in. Okay, so Q low for the low reservoir of energy or Q out, depending on how you learn this. Okay, so what we're looking for here is to find out the coefficient of performance. So for that, we just need to relate precisely those things, right? We just need to relate the our desired output with the consumption. So in this case here, we we have all the information we need because the only thing that we're missing is precisely the work outputs, which we can find easily, right? We just need to subtract the 2200, sorry, the 22,000 and the 15,000. We get 7,000, obviously. So this is work being inputted. So work in, if you will, equals 7,000. Obviously, units have to be the same. That is kilojoules per hour, if I'm mistaken. Okay, so 7,000. So the coefficient of performance for this guy here, COP is what is our QL? 12, 15, 15,000. So 15,000 divided by 7,000. Units are the same. This cancels out and this is 2.14.
about 2.4G. And that is our answer for that problem. Okay, again, simple problem. The idea is not to be uh, hard on the math, but just to solve this problem in a way that's hopefully intuitive. So this is saying that for every energy, for every amount of energy, and you can take any unit of energy that you wish for this analogy, for every amount of energy you put in here, you're getting 2.14 the effect of what you're desiring, which is exactly to remove energy from our cold source, cold sink, I should say, cold reservoir. Okay, so if I am putting, I don't know, 10 watts of energy into this refrigerator in the form of work, then I'm getting uh, 21.4 watts out of the cold reservoir. And that's the idea of the coefficient of performance. It's what's the useful thing you're being outputted by, how much you're paying for it, or what's your desired outcome divided by the consumption. Okay, so hopefully this was useful. This is supposed to be simple. It gets complicated further down, but the idea here is just to introduce you to these simple concepts and hopefully this is going to make sense. You're not going to have to memorize any of this. If this was useful, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos. And if you have any questions, just leave them below. Talk soon.